Hello, my name is Bill Goebel. Today we're going to talk about using SILSAFE data. As one of the founders of Exeter, I'm proud to report that in the last 20 plus years, Exeter has grown to arguably the most recognized functional safety company in the world. We have offices in every key region. We think of ourselves as a knowledge company. We do a lot of research in terms of incident reports and field failure reports. We take all that data, convert it into information, and then publish it in our technical papers, our books, and our training courses. Exeter has three business groups, a system life cycle services group, which supports owner operator safety life cycle functional safety and cybersecurity, an engineering tools group who creates engineering tools primarily for functional safety and cybersecurity, and a certification and assessment group which assesses and certifies devices, systems, components, and people. Our engineering tools group has created a suite of tools called Excellentia. They are for system lifecycle tasks, including HAZOP, LOPA, SIL selection, SIL verification, proof test generation, and even incident recording during operations and maintenance. The tools group also has a set of tools for those who develop products for functional safety and cybersecurity automation applications. Exeter Certification has a scheme for functional safety and for cybersecurity. Exeter has been fully accredited by ANAB, the American National Accreditation Body. We were quite pleased when ARC Advisory Group did a study of functional safety certification in 2015 and discovered that Exeter had become the global leader in functional safety certification. We're even a stronger leader in cybersecurity certification as Exeter was the first company in the world to be accredited for cybersecurity certification. We're quite lucky that we have functional safety standards that are performance based. An engineering process called the safety life cycle is embedded in these standards with phase one being risk analysis. How much risk reduction do we need? Phase two, realization. How do we design to meet the needed risk reduction? And lastly, how do we keep it safe during operations and maintenance? Let's just take a quick look at analysis phase because that's what you need to understand. Analysts study processes and identify hazards. For any identified hazard, they figure out what is the cause of that, the initiating event. Are there layers of protection that would prevent the accident from happening? This is called layer of protection analysis. Imagine a hazard was identified where a pressure controller would fail and we would have a high pressure event. How often? Well, once I say once every 20 years. That means there's 0.05 events per year. We have three independent protection layers identified, a safety function, a pressure relief valve, and a rupture disc. We have to answer the question, do we even need a safety instrumented function? And if we do, how much risk reduction do we need? So we'll take a look at the event frequency and compare it to tolerable risk, which is one times 10 to the minus 6. Uh, we need a lot of risk reduction, but hold it. I'm not going to put in a SIF unless I really need it. So first thing I'm going to do is take credit for the pressure relief valve and the rupture disc. So we give those a risk reduction credit of 10. Hmm. And the event frequency drops to 0 0.0005. We still need a lot more risk reduction. So it's clear we must have a safety instrumented function and we can quickly calculate that we need a risk reduction of minimum 500. So we'll specify a 550 
and send it down to the designers. If you are an engineer designing or performing SIF verification, you must show that the design meets the needed risk reduction in three ways. Arguably, the risk reduction factor calculation is the hardest of these three barriers to meet. The risk reduction factor calculation involves many variables, but arguably most agree that the failure rate data for the devices is the most important input variable. So we conclude that any person performing SIF verification calculations must verify the integrity of all failure rate data. Make sure it's intended for the application, make sure it includes all real failures, and make sure it matches the site operations and maintenance capability. You might say, well, well, well what site? What, what are you talking about, site operations and maintenance capability? Exeter calls that the Site Safety Index, SSI. And if you want to read a whole lot about it, there's two good white papers on the Exeter website. We have a performance-based standard that allows us to optimize our designs, but we have to show that we meet needed risk reduction. To do that, we must check to see if we have realistic failure rate data. And remember that there are many different methods and different assumptions that can be made to estimate or predict failure rates. And so sometimes with order of magnitude difference, and that's why all given failure rate data must be vetted and checked. Realistic failure rate data must be used in order to get realistic risk reduction. That's what SIL safe data was for, to help you verify and check all data. The SIL safe data is a chart of upper and lower bound per device and it's based upon primarily field failure data. It's also based on the site safety index model and statistical analysis of calibrated FMEDAs. Together these sets of data represent a foundation that considers device design variations, operational environment variations, and application variations. SIL safe data provides a means to check applicability of any given failure rate data because realistic data is absolutely necessary. By now, you've probably looked at SIL safe data, and you can see an upper bound and a lower bound number for various different categories and types of products. And you can use it to check information. For example, a mechanical manufacturer provided an independent third party failure report. I've looked it over, and it, something doesn't look right. I think I see 17.3 fits. Let's look again. Oh yeah, my experience indicates that might be very dangerously low. But let's check. I can't tell what they used here. It's likely they used manufacturer's re warranty return data. But an pneumatic scotch yoke actuator spring return lower bound 400 fits. This data is not okay. Given, uh, I don't even think it's worth investigating. Throw it out and use generic data. Example number two, the certificate provides failure rate data. The calibrated FMEDA method is good. That's okay, that, that's a positive. The certificate says, let's see, 427 fits for a spring return, pneumatic scotch yoke, 400. Yeah, that's within range. Example number three, a certification body report. Now this is on, uh, what is this, floating valves, uh, floating ball valves or trunnion ball valves. Okay. I can see that the certification body has been quite forthright and honest on the methodology used. And apparently it's manufacturer's field uh, warranty data, field failure feedback. And um, the certification body did not verify the accuracy of the information. 
Now, this certification body is technically valid and doing, it looks like they're doing an excellent job with statistical analysis and they're very honest and forthright. But is this data any good for SIF verification? Let's compare. Data provided for a trunnion ball valve, look down there, it's 95.1 to 200. And the lower limit of sill safe data is 400. The floating ball valve is, oh, that's really low. Basically, 11.68 to 25. Sill safe limit for a floating ball valve is 300. This data is not okay. Let's look at another certification body. Certificate failure rate data. Trunnion ball valve, floating ball valve. Okay, we have 210 fits or 109. That's better than 11 to 25, but hmm. It looks to me like the certification body is technically competent and forthright and honest because it says random and systematic failures which are the responsibility of the manufacturer were examined. That means none of the real failures caused by anything other than the manufacturer were considered. I'm glad the certification body was honest to tell us about this, but let's compare it to sill safe data. The Trunnion had 210 minimum sill safe data, 400. Really? So I conclude that you probably should, if, you, if it's manufacturer only, you should probably multiply by at least two or 2.5. Floating ball valve, 109, minimum is 300. This data is not okay for SIF verification as is. Let's look at another certificate. What is this? What is this? A trunnion mounted ball valve. So depending on the application, it's from 505 to 898. Trunnion ball valve, 400 to 900. This data is okay. Good. Here's another certificate. A floating ball valve. I can see that depending on, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of different applications here and service conditions. That's good, but so it's 369 looks like the smallest. 693 looks as full stroke severe service. And we didn't even think about tight shutoff yet. So let's make sure we're comparing to the right thing. Cell safe data, 400 to 900 for trunnion, 300 to 900 for floating ball. It's in range, this data is okay. Good. We do a lot of failure data comparisons and it's become very clear to many, many people around the world that estimation techniques based on manufacturer's return data have so many optimistic assumptions that the results are likely very inaccurate. Even when published by a third party statistical expert or certification body, it's the assumptions that count. Some certification body data is based on calibrated FMEDA, which is based on field failure data. And so far, most of those, every comparison has been within range. Other certification bodies calculate values based only on failures caused by the manufacturer. This will likely be less than half of a realistic value. So be extremely careful. And for the most part, the certification bodies are honest and forthright. If you don't have information about how it's calculated, you probably should reject it. Any engineer performing SIF verification calculations has the duty and the moral obligation to verify given failure rate data. Verification must check if the data is realistic, suitable for the application, and suitable for the site 
safety index. Use SILSAFE data to help you do this. If you need more information, there's a lot of relevant white papers on the Exeter website. And thank you very much for your time.